Hey guys, what is up? And today we're back with another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, we um, figured out that Angel Star was a detective in the past. And um, she testified for us about the murder, although we can see that she's clearly lying over here. This game is just as hard as- this case is just as hard as I remember, so let's just hope that I can make it through this. Let's do this. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her and explained the rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made her... made to escape, but, in... but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about the scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That was never a good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks! Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. An oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Wow. That's... something. Very well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you will. Mm. Hold it. So, where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There is a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? Hold it. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm. Maybe you should press her for more details? Oh, shoot. Let's press this again. There you go. I'd like to see this on the floor plan, it's just to be safe. The Lunchland car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B Block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That will make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing! The Kofa Queen! Lunch Lady Adleth, indeed! It would have taken her time- a little time to climb over the fence, so she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Hold it. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky! Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word? So what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean. By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory... It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, no, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of, was out of order that day. Hmm, good witnessing, witness! Good witnessing. Whatever happened to good testifying? You should of course add this to your testimony. The things I do to please the rookie defense attorney. Hold it. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! Uh -huh. I was going to ask the same thing! 
I'll only say this one time. So listen, listen close. So listen closely, rookies. How could you see that then? Oh wait. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. She then picked up the, the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. And during that time, you climbed. And during that time, you climbed over the tangling fence. Then, when I boldly grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this. What is it? What is it, Mr. Wright? How did you see that if she was behind the thing? But I don't know what to, um... You see, if she was over here, then how could she have seen behind the partition? That doesn't make sense. Can I do this? Objection. Yeah! <laughs> Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Skye. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hm, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me and I'll make you cough it all up. Ahem, let's look at the four plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, that's true. You couldn't possibly have seen what Miss Sky making that phone call. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. <laughs> order, order, what is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies! <sighs> That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about... Where she saw it. Miss Scott tries to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie, I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from where Miss Star witnessed the crime was here. Hmm. She couldn't have witnessed it in B block. And I'm thinking it's the security room, but then she couldn't have witnessed, um, well, this guy committing the murder from the, um, actually committing the murder if she actually did see it at all. I'm gonna try it anyway, just to see if it'll... maybe. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room is in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so you can see the entire lot. Mm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have been, where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, your honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. 
I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star? How many years have I been getting the better of men to think that the tables could be turned? Today, a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order, order, witness! What have you done? You used to be a detective, you should know better! I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. You say it still stands, however, I disagree, plays Colrus's theme. <laughs> yeah, I know that meme. If a witness is found to be lying that they're guilty of perjury, she knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what was her reason, Mr. Wright? Huh? Let me. <laughs> Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station, but she lied and said she saw it from B Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? Angle of view to the crime, distance to the crime, and distance in light. Difference in lighting. Okay, let's see. Angle of view to the crime. Does that really matter at all? No, it does not. Distance to the crime. That could also. That could matter. That could matter. And difference in lighting. I'm gonna say that it's either, um, no, but angle of view to the crime could also mean something. They all could mean good things, like, seriously though, maybe difference in lighting isn't right? I have no idea. Okay, so since these two are technically the same thing, angle of view to the crime and difference in lighting, I'm gonna go distance. Okay, I'm right. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness, you... Y yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has got from blow to inedible! I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Mmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend! <laughs> he wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass-walled station. Ah, oh, they stairs. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. What in the world? That's why I had to go to the visitor's parking lot in B Block. That's quite a detour! It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. F five minutes?! That's a long time! Mm, this changed things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it! I'm, I'm photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spot. You have a point, and this walk is a wonderful invention. It is. It's a very wonderful invention. V invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely! Uh-oh. 
Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Five minutes? Let's just raise an objection and see what happens. Objection. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You can make pasta in that amount of time. If you'd like it al dente, you can make baggy noodles in that time. Oh, I love Maggie. I've got lunchboxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five minute blink. Isn't that strange? Strange. If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! D don't get the wrong idea, I didn't kill anyone. <laughs> but you had the instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Y yeah! Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and, the, and a blank in her testimony. Miss Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright! That was too close. I'm afraid that the Corfolk Queen has been dethroned, and with that, court is adjourned. I knew it! I knew it! Someone was going to say something and it was this woman! Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off of me! I prefer to not take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunch boxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Starr. Ah. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo! A triple decker! Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. And let me eat this lunch because it's delicious. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the lunch lab motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to put out of her lunchbox this time? I'm loving this lunchbox. <laughs> I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe, did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on the shoe. One was, of course, the victim's, and the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. What? W what? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive de evidence needs. Wow. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed. Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor. I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two evidence of the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one: No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe was illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edward sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective, as I mentioned previously. This shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, 
It was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. <laughs> you could at least study some evidence law, really! The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding. It appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against your witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged? Very well, right, Mr. and uh, Mr. Ryan. You may cross examine the witness. And then I'm going to eat my lunch. <laughs> I can't get over this joke. I'm sorry. Uh huh. This was added to the. On the bottom? Hmm. Well, alright, um... And you found the shoe at the scene of the crime? I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. I wanted to make myself useful while I was waiting for the police to arrive. So like an ill-trained pooch, you snuck off with the shoe. I was afraid someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe was my secret weapon if that should happen. See this fashionable basket I have here? It carries more than lunchboxes, gentlemen. I'm happy for you and your lunchbox bag, really. In any case, you remove valuable evidence from the scene of the crime. Now tell us what you did next. You can't say for sure that the blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, Ricky? Huh? Well, speak up. Uh, well, blood comes in four types, A, B, O, and AB. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types with all the blood tests out there, which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood just down to one down to just one person. Or so I hear. That's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten a DNA test. I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone but Miss Lana Skies. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You order the prepper fresh guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like her client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole hot spring, I think. Mr. Wright, do you or do you not have a problem with the shoe? A problem? This is 